So welcome to QR Codes in Adult Education. Um, this is the second uh, webinar in a series on social media that we've put together uh, to celebrate Digital Learning Day. And, um, and we're looking at how QR codes can be used in adult education, so welcome. Um, many of you have probably seen QR codes, uh, seen these black and white boxes around the place. Um, when I do this workshop face-to-face, -face, uh, it's always surprising how many people, most, I would say at least 90% of the people have seen QR codes, but a very few of them have actually clicked on the QR codes. Um, so we're going to talk a little about what happens when you click on them, uh, what they are, um, and how you read them. Um, we're going to talk about how they're used in general life, in, in real life, and then we're also going to look at them specifically for education. Uh, and then we'll quickly go through how to actually create your own in one simple way. There are many, many ways out there, but we're going to look at one specific way. Um, and then talk just very briefly about how to create content. Um, if you want to use QR codes, you can certainly use them to take you to content that's already been created, but you might want to create your own uh, that you want to make available to your students. So we'll do a very quick uh, look at that. So what does QR code stand for? Um, QR stands for Quick Response. Um, and these were actually developed in the 90s um, to work, uh, to be used in looking in tracking car parts in the manufacturing of Toyota cars in Japan. Um, they've really become much more used in our society now because of the um, widespread use of smartphones and other devices that have apps, uh, which is a required aspect of this, that you need to have an app um, for, for the way we use them. Uh, and you also have to have a device that has a camera, uh, which the, the app uses the camera to look at the QR code, and then also um, access to the internet so that you can go to where the QR code tells you where to go. Um, so that's why they've, they've become so part of our culture now. Um, as I said, you do need a mobile device. You can do it with a laptop. There is a there is an app for the laptop, uh, something that you can move around that has a camera on it. But the primary use and the way that it's being, when you see it in the world, is being used is mostly for smartphones and for you know, iPads and uh, Android tablets and so forth. Um, you do need to have a QR code reader, which is usually an app that you have to download. I've never seen them come um, installed, but Maybe you're lucky enough to have that. Um, there are many, many QR code readers out there to choose from, and one of the challenges uh, if you're going to be working with uh, tools like this is how to select the right one. Um, and this is actually a good lesson to do with your students anyway, to discuss how, you know, they, they probably, if they have smartphones, they've been making decisions for quite a long time on what apps to buy or, or um, download or install. So it's great to have a discussion about how do you, how do they make their choices already and what are some good ways to make choices. And the key there is usually, you know, they, in most app stores, the apps are listed in order of popularity. Um, and there's usually some reviews. And then there's an issue of whether it costs money or not costs money. Uh, with a QR code reader, I've not really come across any I don't like. I would say there are so many free ones that it's not worth spending money on one. And I would also say um, if you find that when you download one, it, it requires you to uh, give a lot of information about yourself that you don't want to continue with that app and would delete it and not answer those questions because there's no need for you to give them any information about yourself uh, in order to use a QR code reader. Um, the two that I have used and enjoy using for Apple devices is Scan. Um, I've also used Crafter, which I don't have listed here, but that's Q-R-A-F-T-E-R -E for, for an Apple devices. And then QR Droid is what I use for my, an, for my smartphone and my Android devices. Um, again, don't, you don't need to download these if you already have your own or install these if you have your own. Uh, but just in case you're looking for ones, those are pretty good ones. So when you have your QR code reader um, installed, the way it works is it's going to use the camera on your phone uh, to scan the image of the QR code. And you can see in this image, um, the cam in the phone smartphone window, the entire QR code is showing. And that's really the goal is that you need to have at least the whole QR code inside that image, that box. Uh, and then it, it automatically reads the QR code and then does what the QR code tells it to do. And the QR code is a, is a it has more data embedded in it than a regular 
barcode. So that's partly why it's so valuable for us because it not only has information, but it also tells your smartphone or device what to do with that information. Um, the most typical QR code is going to take you to a website. Uh, the, but it's also possible for a QR code. I have a QR code on the back of my business card that will take you to your uh, phone book inside your phone and add my contact information in there or you could have one that takes you to a Wi-Fi signal and, and logs you in. So there's a variety of purposes that QR codes are used for but the most typical is to take you to something online and that's what we're really going to be looking at today. And that's why you need to have internet access. Um, so why use QR codes? And, and really, um, I got most excited about QR codes because I've become kind of interested in uh, mobile learning and using the devices that our students come to class with rather than seeing them as something that need to be turned off and put away, actually utilizing them in class, but certainly helping our students to think about how they could be used outside of class. Uh, and so one of the challenges if you're using mobile devices is if you have a room full of people, how do you get them all to the same place at the same time somewhere online? So you can imagine um, I might I have a uh, evaluation actually that I'm going to ask you all to fill out at the end of this uh, webinar um, and I want to get you to that evaluation and it's a link online and I, I created it through Google Forms and this is what it looks like when the QR code comes out of Google Forms. So if you were to type this into your phone right now, uh, you would get to the QR to the uh, Google Form and you could fill in your evaluation there. But this is a pretty onerous looking uh, link. It's pretty long. Um, there are some words, but it's mostly numbers and letters and combination of uppercase and lowercase, which in this case probably shouldn't matter, but it does, the fact that they have them makes me think that it might matter. Um, and so even if I was saying it to you, uh, it would be hard for you to type it in, especially on a, on a small keyboard. Uh, and if you're doing this with a large group of people, at least some people would get left behind, uh, if not everybody, because this is really pretty horrible. So if I have a long link like this in my own life, I would probably take it to something like bit.ly bit.ly.com where I could get it shortened um, so that it would look like this uh, and bit.ly is a, is a great tool. It's an online space where you can take a long URL and paste it and then it will create a short URL for you. So this is a little bit more easily, easy for folks to type in. So if I asked you right now to type this in on your smartphone, you maybe could do it. It definitely is case sensitive, so you'd have to make sure you use a capital M, not a small M. Um, depending on the font, that one uh, in the second part of that link could look like an I or an L. So there's places where people can make mistakes still, and it's still not super easy, especially you know, you're going to be looking up, you know, if, I, if I'm showing it to you on a board and you have to type it on your phone, you're going to be looking up every now and then to get to the next letter. So it's better, but it's still not fabulous. Now, if you have an account with Bitly, you are allowed to customize your Bitly link, and so you could make the latter part of your link into words that people could maybe remember better as they're typing them in. So now I've, I've made a word here, and, and again, I think every time, every change here would increase the number of people who would get it right uh, or not struggle with it. But it's still problematic, and I, and I would ask you, you know, to really try doing it right now and see how difficult it is. But if I take that link and make it into a QR code, all you would have to do is hold your phone up, once you've had the app, hold your phone up and scan this. And that is so much faster. Uh, it's so much simpler. There's only one step, maybe two steps. Sometimes you have to tap on, your, on the actual app to tell it to take you to the URL. But it's generally very, very simple. And so you're going to have fewer people left behind uh, than if you had given them certainly the long link and then even the shortened version. So this is the first thing that really struck me about QR codes, that this was really valuable. If I didn't use it for anything else, this would save me a lot of time that I now spend walking around the room trying to help people get to where we needed to go. And I have also, because I present at conferences quite often where I might have a lot of people in the room, um, the ability for me to spend that time with people is very limited. So giving them an easier way to get there is, it's became, it was obvious to me that QR codes would be valuable. Um, but QR codes have more value than just that. And I think, again, as we work through this webinar today and as you play with QR codes yourself, I think you'll find the places where they really um, resonate for you and for your students. Um, so again, first of all, that they help everyone get to the same place at the same time. Um, 
they, in doing that, they make it much easier for you to bring in things like video or audio clips or photos or images from the internet into the classroom, even if you don't have a lab or, or computers, access to computers all the time. Um, and I think helping students and you, yourself, think more about how you can use these devices when you need information. And one of the, um, just recently I was reading about a blog uh, article about how the digital divide is now um, maybe still somewhat access to the actual devices, but it's even more now the use of those devices and that some people are utilizing the full function of their tools and getting information when they need it and feeling empowered and, and being informed consequently. And other people, you know, don't do that. They have the smartphone, they have the, the device, but they're playing video games maybe or, or doing things that are not necessarily leading to deeper knowledge or, or more capacity or capability. Uh, and so teaching our students and ourselves how to, reminding us maybe to utilize these tools deeper and, and, and in a more um, instructional way is a really valuable thing to include in classes. So um, using a QR code to get everyone to watch a video together and then discussing the video I think can be a really valuable tool for a variety of reasons. Uh, also, there, once you learn how to make a QR code, they're really easy to make. So not only could a teacher make them, but the students could make them too. And I think we all know that students love opportunities to surprise teachers and uh, in a positive way. Uh, and so, you know, I can imagine my students would have loved to make QR codes and have me scan them and, and guess beforehand perhaps where we're going and then see where we're going as part of the, you know, outcome of a homework assignment or something like that. Uh, and there is an aspect of QR codes just because of the mysteriousness. They don't mean anything to my eye. So I see a box with black and white squares in it. I don't know it beforehand where I'm going. And so the idea that I can scan that and sort of seemingly by magic, I'm now taken to a place that could be beautiful or have this video that I want, you know, that I'm going to be shown or whatever, feels very magical and adds excitement. Uh, and certainly us humans, we, we kind of like that. So that this part of technology, I think, is always an additional bonus to uh, one of the reasons to incorporate more technology into our instruction. So if we think about how QR codes are used in real life, and I'm sure you can all imagine right now, or not imagine, but remember when you've seen them. Uh, mostly people tell me they've seen them in the newspaper or when they go to a store. Um, and they certainly are in New York City. We see them on the subway. We see them everywhere. But most of those are for advertising, and I'm probably not, I haven't clicked on a lot of those, and maybe that's why people haven't scanned many when, they, when that's where they've seen them. But there are places where I think there's been a real functional benefit made by using QR codes. Uh, example A here is of a bus line. Um, I live in Brooklyn, New York, and the bus line actually that happens to be my local bus line is one of two in the city where they're experimenting with having a website where you can track where your bus actually is on the route. So instead of having to go and look at the timetable uh, and kind of hope that the bus is still on the timetable, you can actually go to that website and see where your bus really is. Um, the QR code they've now put onto the bus stop will take you to that website. So you certainly can go to that website on your own and type in the, the website address, but the QR code obviously makes it very easy. And then once I did that one time, I also bookmarked it. So now I don't scan the QR code every time, but I have that website bookmarked on my phone and so I can go there whenever I want to. Uh, and I use that a lot. Uh, and I can't tell you how many people stand at the bus stop who aren't using it, even if they're playing on their phones. They don't, it hasn't occurred to them um, to utilize this website, which you know, it, uh, to me there's nothing, there's there's only a few things that are more frustrating than waiting at a bus stop and hoping that pe the bus is actually on time. Um, B is an example uh, that I've, I haven't done it with Lufthansa, which is this example, but I've done it with Delta, where you can get your boarding pass sent to your phone via text message or email, and when you open it up, um, it turns out to be a QR code. So you're not creating the QR code, but again, they are using that QR code as a way to identify you through as your boarding pass. So it, you'll see them there. Uh, C is an example. The Brooklyn Museum um, has a uh, app that you can use to walk around the museum. If you scan the QR code, it takes you to the app. What they've also done in certain situations is have QR codes beside pieces of 
art uh, or in, as part of their exhibition, and if you scan that, you actually get more information about the artwork uh, on your device. D in the middle is pretty typical, again, in New York City, I've seen a lot in the windows of real estate offices where they may have always had photographs of houses that are for sale or apartments that are for rent or whatever. Uh, there's usually one image and then some information, and then you're supposed to call them for more. Uh, in this case, they have the QR code that you can scan and then get usually more images of a the house and, and find out more information. So it's again something you could have done in the past by typing in a long URL, but would you have really typed in that long URL? And it, having the QR code there, I certainly used that once or twice in a way that I would never have typed in. I would not have taken the time to type in a long link. Um, e is a really interesting example, one that is particularly appropriate or resonates, I think, for education. Um, this is a library. It was actually a school library that had historically always had a pile of um, paper lists of their their newest DVDs, all the DVDs they had, the free tutoring hours, uh, and a list of new books. And you can imagine, you know. They would either run out of those sheets of paper, or the or the information would get outdated, and they would have to make more. Um, now they can have these QR codes, so they update information on a website, but the QR code stays the same. So they, they this, these signs can stay there forever, and as you scan them, you'll get to the latest information. So it's updating the website that becomes the work rather than making copies. Um, and then students also could even uh, bookmark those links and, and be able to get there even when they're not in the library, which is very valuable. Um, F is a typical example, as I mentioned earlier, of people seeing QR codes in stores. Um, I know Target, for example, has these QR codes around the store, and often they either lead to coupons or c price comparisons. Um, so again, for folks who are you know on a tight budget, or anybody actually, probably, uh, coupons can be very useful. So that's a pretty useful way to use these QR codes. Uh, and then G is an example of a business card, which I mentioned earlier that I have on my, the back of my business card. So if you scan that, all the contact information from the, from the business card goes into your address book. So if you're going to use these in education, some things to consider, and, and really this is partially about planning out the lesson a little bit. Um, so first of all, uh, there is something fabulous about QR codes, but you do want to use them wisely. So you're going to think first about your learning goals, and you don't want to have to, um, you want to see how this could support something you're already doing, but maybe you've been challenged with. So maybe you have a video link that you would really like everybody to see in class, but you know, that you don't have access to a projector or the lab is busy this week, um, so you have a problem. How do you show the video? That's a great time to bring in a QR code. Um, you know, I, I'm, it's, it, that's a really great way to think about technology in general is that how can it resolve a problem that you're having now or something that's not working quite the way you want it to or some missing piece to a lesson that you're already doing. Is there a way that technology can fill, fill in that gap or improve or deepen uh, what you're already doing? Then the next thing you have to do is make sure that your students all have access to devices that can read QR codes. And that could be a class set of, you know, iPods or something like that. Um, but if they, if you've, if you've um, found, you know, you can do a quick poll in your class and find out how many of them have uh, smartphones. And if at least half of them have smartphones, then uh, they can certainly download a QR code. Um, so once you know that they have the devices, the next step is to make sure they have the actual QR code reader. And I will warn you that if you might need to, I would recommend doing that as a separate lesson, maybe a week or so before you're actually going to use the QR code reader. I found, not as much with students, but, <laughs> but with teachers, there are always a few people in the room who ne didn't necessarily set up their phones themselves, don't know the password, uh, they don't need time to go home and talk to someone who, who actually set the phone up for them or, or to figure out their password or get a new password to actually get into their app store. So you want to give some time uh, for those folks to gather that information and then actually download the app and make sure the app is working. So uh, I like to do that as a separate lesson. It's a luxury that I don't often have in my one-off workshops uh, and always there are a few people who can never, who cannot uh, download the app because of that. Um, and then creating the QR codes is the last piece. And QR codes, as I mentioned earlier, are actually very easy to create, so we'll talk about that. But that is something you'll want to do, and you'll want to have a system for saving them so that you can access them later uh, in case you want to use them again 
Um, so some examples of QR codes actually being used in education. The examples here, the first image in the upper left corner is of a library, and there was a librarian at a workshop I went to who had, uh, they were, it was to do with the Hunger Games, um, and she had found, in, if you've read the Hunger Games, there's no maps inside the Hunger Games book of the country where the Hunger Games takes place, and it's kind of interesting that there's no map there because it, it is very geographical. The book has a lot of sort of geography. Uh, referred to, um, and so people have created their own maps, and if you go online and search um, Hunger Games maps, you'll find lots of options out there of, of things that people have done. So she picked one of those that she liked, and she made a QR code for that link and put that inside the book, so that now when you're reading the book, if you want to, you can scan the QR code and see the image on your, on your smart device, on your phone. Um, she also found there's a, a place in the story where uh, there's a very sad lullaby song, and she found someone online, again, who had sung the song that she liked. Uh, and she, again, made a QR code and put that inside the book where the song is being sung. So now, again, if you want to listen to the song right then and there, you can do that. This can make reading much more exciting for people who are maybe not so excited about reading. Um, and even for those who like reading, this is just a deepening of the experience. You know, that you kind of, um, you're still using your imagination and learning how to read and practicing all your reading skills, but you're adding the sort of wonder of, of connecting with um, sound clips or other visuals that, that can really connect all the different aspects of how people enjoy to get information. So that that's pretty striking. I think that could be a very valuable tool. And again, it might not be that the teacher does it, but maybe the students do it for each other. So again, if you're reading a certain book, you might ask each student to come up with at least one QR code to some link online that's related to the reading that they're doing. Uh, and the, the real lesson is going online and, and looking for the link. and and being able to talk about why you think that's a good link, but the QR code makes it easier for people to access it. Um, in the bottom left corner, there's a uh, PowerPoint with a QR code in it, and I do that quite often in my presentations where I will have a QR code to the actual PowerPoint. So I'll upload the PowerPoint to SlideShare, which is an online place that's free that you can upload PowerPoints to, and then um, make a QR code to that link so that while you're watching the PowerPoint with me, you could also download it or look at it on your device and then have it for when you leave, um, you know, send the link to your, to your home computer or access it later. Uh, and that's been incredibly valuable when I've been attending workshops to be able to get the PowerPoint right then and there as an electronic file rather than even a handout. And then on the right is a sort of home gallery uh, that is the, and again, this is K through 12, uh, but I think very appropriate for adult education if, you know, as long as you translate it to your particular students or your particular lessons. Uh, in this lesson, these students had been talking about Texas history and had had to draw some aspect of that history. Uh, and then they were, they were recorded talking about their pictures um, and those recordings were put up online and then QR codes were made to take you to those sound clips. So you can, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you might be taking people to content that already exists online, but you may also be creating your own content or students may be creating content. Uh, and in all these examples here, that's what's happening. Well, no, it's not true. The first example was more taking people to existing content, but the bottom and the one on the right are really examples of uh, actually creating content and then using QR codes to take people to that content. Um, the example on the right, it's something that I've done with students um, in ESL, particularly, where, where we use a lot of images as a jumping off point for either writing or a discussion, but I think it could be used for um, any kind of writing prompt. Um, so in this case, the example is of my, there's a photograph that I brought in of my mother, of my grandmother and my father, uh, and I recorded my voice on my Google Voice by calling my phone and leaving a voicemail for myself. Uh, and then that is a very easy sound file then to download and upload wherever you need to, and I could upload it, to, I put it into my Dropbox. From Dropbox, it's very easy to put it into Vimeo, which is very much like YouTube. Um, so now it's an online, it's located online. Uh, and as soon as it's online, I can now make a QR code. So I did that using Bitly, and we're going to look at that in a minute about how to use Bitly to make your QR code. And so this is my QR code. So if you were scanning this right now with your 
with your mobile device, you would actually hear my voice describing this photograph. And you could imagine, you know, not only, I mean, the lesson was very much the same as the lesson I would have normally done that would have led to students coming up to the front of the room and speaking about the picture, and you could certainly could still do that. But what this enables you to do is maybe have a display that you invite the class next door to come in to do. Uh, it could lead to a listening activity where students have to listen to each other and write down what they heard. Um, so I think that it can, it, your, your lesson can be very much the same, the vocabulary, the grammar, the whatever you're already doing, but now you're, you're extending it by having this aspect to it and pop, perhaps deepening it. People sometimes, when they know the audience is going to be larger than just their teacher or their classmates, they tend to work a little bit harder or do more. So uh, I think it can be very valuable in that way. So making your own QR codes. Uh, making your own QR codes shouldn't cost you any money. Um, the two top ones here, Bitly and Google, are very, very simple ways to make QR codes, but they are uh, QR codes that take you to a website. So they're, they're a bit of a blunt instrument. That's all they will do. So, so when you make a Bitly, when you use Bitly for a QR code or Google, that's when you have a place online that you want people to go to. Xing or Zing, Xing, I'm not sure how they say their name, and Kwa and ScanLife are much uh, more robust tools. They can, um, when you go to any of those websites you, you, and go to the QR code generators on them, you can identify what, what you're trying to do. So is it contact information? Is it taking someone to your Wi-Fi? Um, I can't remember the other things it has. I think you can even have QR codes that go just to a statement, so almost like a text message. Um, but and, and they're very, very simple to, to use. They just make different levels of complexity in their QR codes, but they're all quite useful. Uh, but as the primary use of QR codes for me is to get, get to links, uh, I particularly like Bitly. So I'm going to show you how to do it using Bitly. Um, so the, as I mentioned earlier, bitly.com is a URL shortener. Um, and this is a valuable tool, even if you're not doing QR codes. I came to love Bitly particularly when I used Twitter, but I think I've used it now for many, many things, not just those things. So even if I'm sending an email or making a link um, on my website sometimes even, I will use Bitly. And the reason for that is that if I um, you can use Bitly without an account, but if you create an account, which is free, um, then every link that you save, every link that you create is saved. Uh, not only that, but it's also tracked. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, yes, it's also tracked. Um, and then also you can customize. So those are the benefits of having the account. Um, so to make your own QR code, the first step is to have the content that you want. Um, so say you're going, you know, you have a video already that you want to share. So there's a uh, YouTube video or, as I mentioned earlier, the, the link to the Google form for my evaluation. So you have your long link and you copy it uh, by clicking on it and either right-clicking and copying or Control-C. Uh, um, so that's up in your address bar of your browser and this doesn't matter what browser you're using. Um, so you click on the copy. Uh, then you're going to have to open up either another tab or go into this particular tab, uh, this, where, this address bar uh, and paste, um, oh sorry, I'm taking us a step ahead. So actually you're going to have Bitly open. I like to have multiple tabs open. If you're not sure about how to have tabs, you can have multiple windows open, whatever you like. So you have your long URL, now you need to have bitly.com open and you're going to paste your long link into the shorten bar. And when you look at Bitly, it's very obvious where the shorten bar is. So you'll paste that in there, and then you'll click shorten. Um, now you're going to take that short link uh, and take it up to the address bar. And again, I like to have multiple tabs open for all these steps, but you can certainly keep just recycling the same tab if that's easier for you. Uh, so if you pasted Bitly, the Bitly link into the address bar, now right at the end of that, before you do anything else, you're going to type dot QR. Um, so this is me pasting it into my address bar. And now I've typed dot QR. And, we, and now I hit enter. And once you hit enter, um, the QR code will appear on your screen. Uh, and I do have a YouTube video on this that I'll try and find a link to and, and send it out to you. But it is a it is relatively simple. And if you if you uh, yeah. The key is to have your short link, any short link actually that you find, if you if someone sent you one and you add .qr to it and hit enter, you'll get a QR code for it. 
Uh, then when I save them, I, I can you can right click on the image of the QR code and, and copy it and paste it into a Word document or a PowerPoint or whatever, and you can change the size by dragging it from the corner. Um, I like to save them in a uh, Word document with the link actually below it and a description of what it's to because if I ever want to use it again I need to know what it is. By looking at it I can't tell. So it saves you time of having to scan it yourself and find out where you're going. Uh, so then you can save those and maybe have a folder just of QR codes or save it in the folder related to the content that you're working with. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have the account on Bitly, you can also, it tracks how many times your link has been clicked or scanned. So if you create a link and you share it with your students by email and it's just a link and they click on it, or you put it up on the wall in the classroom and people scan it, or you put it on a document that you hand out and people scan it all, every time people go to the location, the website that you want them to go to, that will be tracked here. And it can be kind of impressive. Uh, we have a catalog of our professional development events that we put out twice a year when we have a QR code on there that will take you to um, the catalog online and um, I wouldn't really know how many people actually went to our catalog online if I didn't have the Spitly link. So because we made the link to the online catalog a Bitly link, every time someone clicks on it or goes to it uh, through our link, we get uh, it gets part of our gets into part of our um, analytics here. And it's kind of, it helps me, and I think it would help us for our own, um, you know, if we were even writing up a proposal for funding or something to say that we've reached this, you know, this many people clicked on our professional development catalog could be a real benefit to us. So uh, as a teacher, if you give a homework assignment and everyone has to go to a link online, um, if you use a Bitly link, you won't know who did and who didn't do it, but you'll know if two people, if it got clicked twice versus if it got clicked 50 times. So that can be helpful. Um, so the last piece here is to talk a little bit about um, developing content uh, yourself that you want people to get to through QR codes. And from the very beginning we talked about, the, I mean, the reason I like QR codes is because of this interest I have in mobile technology or using mobile technology with our students. So one of the caveats to using QR codes, or not caveats, but one of the things to think about, I think, when you're using QR codes is that if people are going to use a QR code to get to a online site, is that site going to be useful to them on a small screen? And um, it's quite common still that many websites are not very mobile friendly. So when you get to that website on your smartphone on the small screen, it's actually quite hard to see everything. You can kind of you have to pull, you can use your fingers to enlarge the image, but then maybe the, the tabs don't work or the buttons don't work or the drop down menus don't work. So they might not be as functionally useful uh, on a small screen. And that's a little frustrating. So if you can help it, you don't want to send people to places online that are not mobile friendly through QR codes because the QR code is really going to be used by a mobile device. So uh, if, you're, if, you, if, people, if your students are mostly going to be looking at stuff through computers, don't worry about it. You'll send them a link or have a link maybe on a website that they can click on and go there. The QR code is very specifically to be used with mobile devices and therefore the content that the QR code should go to should be mobile friendly. And this is an example of some, some folks are probably designing, not probably, they are designing websites that are so spare in their design that they kind of work for both. But they're a little bit boring for a regular computer screen and they're not necessarily that much easier to use on a smart, smart smartphone screen. Um, and so I would recommend instead of that, a, an agile design that will change depending on the device you're using to view it. So here's an example of a website that I created using Weebly, which we're going to talk about a little bit more, weebly.com. And on weebly.com, for free, I can create my website very simply dragging components onto my page to, to create the website itself. Um, and the design I did was on the left here where it's got a big image and it's got tabs across the top and it's pretty small, you know, depending on how you're seeing the screen, it's pretty small, but it works very well on a computer screen. Then I don't do anything else, I just publish it the way it is, but if someone goes there from a mobile device, they're going to see what's on the right. So the layout is quite different. The tabs become very important, you know, very uh, large and obvious. Uh, so these home mobile technology harnessing cell phones and using iPads in adult education, these are all the tabs that on the other example are running across the top. Um, 
images can still be there, but they'll be further down so they don't take up so much of the, f the above the fold, as it were, on your small screen. And so that's a really valuable, um, it's very important to think about that. And it's this Weebly.com is a very valuable tool to help you develop uh, content or your students to develop content that is more accessible on a mobile screen. Um, so Weebly.com, like I said, it's free. Uh, you can buy your own URL through them or on your own and connect your website to that URL and that costs some money. But if you don't do that, you will still have a website with a URL. The URL will just have the word Weebly inside it. So um, I think my website's in the lightful dot Weebly dot com, uh, which I don't have a big problem with. So that's wonderful. And like I said, students can use it. I was creating one over the holidays with my niece, who's seven, uh, because I think she's, you know, we're trying to work on reading and writing and it's a little boring to read and write for yourself sometimes, so it's kind of fun to be able to share, and, and there's a magic quality to being able to write something and have it show up on the screen um, that other people can access, that you could look at on a phone or look at on, on a computer. Uh, so um, people have used Weebly for a variety of things. You can make a real website. You can just use it to put up you know, a sentence or some writing and then have a QR code take you there, maybe directions on how to do something. Uh, there is a nice tutorial that takes you through the basic steps of Weebly, uh, and then it's really just going in and playing around. But, the, but it's very, very simple. Sim more simple, I think, than WordPress or some of the other tools I've seen. Um, and I, I was used to using like blog software to do websites because it was quite simple. This is this is even better because you're not even fighting any of the blog design uh, elements. Blogs are tend to be designed so they are chronological, so as you post something new, everything else moves down. Weebly doesn't have any of that. You can add a blog page into your Weebly, but, it, but the default design is not that way. So Weebly.com is a great place to go um, to create online content. That, down at the bottom here, I have a Puffin browser link. Uh, one of the other challenges for folks with mobile devices is access to Flash players. I, I believe it still that uh, iPads don't allow Flash, and I think Android, for a little while at least, was not doing very well with Flash either. So if the website has a lot of Flash on it, uh, it's not going to be a great place to take people um, on those devices. So check your websites. If, if there's a website you want to take people to check it out on your phone before you decide that it's a good one for QR codes because um, if it's flash, it's just going to be a blank screen uh, and that's not any fun at all. And this is my website. So yes, it is nolightful.weebly.com. Uh, and so you could have something very simple in the name, right? It could be your class name or uh, location or something that would be very easy for people to remember. And then while they might get there the first time through a QR code, subsequently they would just have that bookmarked or they would remember the name. But the first time, the easy way to get there is to get a QR code. And part of that is that, you know, once people have been somewhere and seen the value in it, they're much more willing to do a little work to get there again. But the first time, you know, having something kind of fun to do to get there, I think can improve the amount of people who actually go. Uh, there are, so I have started creating a playlist on YouTube uh, of videos around QR codes in education. Um, it's very interesting that there are quite a lot of YouTube videos out there. The beauty of having a play, my playlist is that they tend to be a little bit more adults oriented. Uh, so it's a subset of the total uh, of, of all the uh, YouTube videos on using QR codes in education. Uh, and a lot of them are coming from other countries. So Australia and England seem to be way ahead, um, at least the people who are making the videos on YouTube about QR codes are, are way ahead of us the, uh, than in the United States. Um, which is interesting. I think they've been dealing with mobile tech for longer than we have or seen the value in it for more time than we have. Um, and then there are a lot of links here. So uh, again, this PowerPoint will be put up on um, SlideShare. But these are all links that will take you out to um, lessons that people are already doing using QR codes. Um, and there are a huge variety of them, a huge number of them. Again, tend to be a little bit K-12-ish, but you'll find ways to take these ideas and use them with your students. And this is our evaluation form, so if you watch this uh, webinar and you would like to give me some feedback, it would be great if you went to my um, evaluation form. Uh, I'm always looking for ways to improve this, but also for new ideas of webinars that would be useful to you. 
And finally, this is my contact information. So if you want any more uh, information about this uh, or other social media tools, um, you're welcome to email me um, or contact me in some of these other ways. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.